Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. So today is glute day at the gym. I wanted to share with you my pre-workout supplementation that I do before my workouts. Um, so first we have here Core Fury. Um, this is the stimulant pre-workout that I use because I work out very early in the morning and we need something to get us going. And yes, love this pre-workout. It's cherry flavored. It's amazing. And then Pump. I really like as well as the non-stim version. I do do um, both of these together just because I really enjoy just the blood flow that it gives me, the energy that it gives me. Um, I don't experience any jitters with either of these. There's no like major crash afterwards. Um, it is a nice, good, clean energy up, sustained for the workout, and then I come right back down afterwards. And yeah, it's fantastic. So we're gonna put these in my blender bottle right here, and then we're gonna head off to the gym. All right, so here we are in the gym. Um, every workout I start off with a dynamic-based warm-up depending upon the muscle group that I am working for that particular day. Today is glute day, so that is what I am emphasizing first here in my dynamic warm-up. Um, I work out very early in the morning, as you saw in the previous clip. It's about, you know, usually between 4 to 5 a.m. each morning, um, five days a week. And so I feel like a dynamic warm-up, you know, before any workout is imperative, but especially before your early morning training sessions. Get it in, get the muscles firing, get the muscles warm. Helps, of course, with injury prevention as well as um, just getting everything nice and firing to where that my muscle connects is even more effective. So I'm started off here with some glute bridges. I like bracing on the edge of a bench or a box for those because again, I'll really feel them in my lower glutes, really get those things firing. And then I'll of course switch it up to single leg variation that you saw here. And then of course I'm moving on to a banded kickback here. Um, I like doing the upper glute variation of this. This is the Dayraja Hill variation um, of you know kicking back and hitting more of the upper um, glute medius and glute minimus with this exercise. Making sure I'm kicking my foot straight back. Um, heel is going back, toes are pointed downward. But again, this is just a warm up. I do about 15 to 20 of these per leg. I'll do two rounds of this entire thing. This is only a snippet. I'll do a separate YouTube video video detailing the entirety of my warm-up sessions for both upper body and lower body. But again, this just gets the muscles working and the muscles firing and helps create that good mind-muscle connection there. Moving into some kettlebell RDLs, working a little bit hamstrings here because of course, you know, hamstrings are a part of your glute day and movements. And I like doing the 40 pound kettlebell for this one, wider stance, really focusing on more of the glutes. So my upper back is rounded. You can't really see it here, but um, focusing again, glutes, hamstrings, getting everything nice and ready and firing to have a really, really good glute workout here. And then lastly, I will um, move into some squats and rotational exercises because I want to get my hips firing, my hip flexors good. I tend to have very tight hips, and so this is a problem area for me that I am continuously working on with some mobility work, but just getting everything ready, doing some rotations, and then after I do my full warm-up, I am more than ready to get started here, and we'll go ahead and get started with the first exercise of my training session. All right, first up is glute-focused reverse lunges. I like starting off sometimes with my workouts a single leg movement or an upper or lower glute-specific based movement to, again, get them firing, do a little bit of pre-exhaustion and pre-fatigue. But you'll notice here that I am lean forward a lot on my front foot. Um, that is to hit really, really hit lower glutes a lot. I am bracing to balance myself because again, I'm not up and down in this movement. Um, I am bracing to hold on to again, really focus on that upper glute firing weight is in the heels and I am trying my darndest to get that lower glute to fire, especially from the bottom. Um, at the bottom portion of this movement is really where I start to feel it. And then I'm not locking out fully because I do tend to feel the lower glute really activating near the top of this movement as well. Um, it's a great movement. I really enjoy it a lot. And um, this is a great movement to switch out occasionally with Bulgarian split squats. Um, I tend to feel this more in my lower glutes than I do with Bulgarian. So that's the reason why I have it right now here in my training program. Next up is everybody's favorite, including my own hip thrusts. 
I'm bracing on about a 12 inch bench here made up of steps. And the goal with that lockout of the hip thrust is gonna be a 90 degree angle between your hip, knee, and ankle. So make sure you film yourself from the side to see if that's actually happening. Um, play with your foot placement here as well. I like mine slightly wider and a band around above my knees because I tend to not feel this as much in my upper glutes, so it helps me achieve that. The lockout is the most important portion of the hip thrust, making sure that your eyes are looking down your stomach to prevent hyperextension, and that sternum is relatively still. Again, lockout, very, very important here. I like using the term, hey, pretend like you're trying to squeeze a quarter in between your butt cheeks, and that'll really get those glutes firing. Making sure you're giving your very, very best effort every single set, spend a few minutes, collect yourself, and then move on to the next set. Next exercise is going to be De Raja Hill <laughs> variation of uh, glute cable abduction. And so this is a fantastic exercise for upper glutes. Um, you'll notice I am standing on a plate here because when I stand on the floor, my foot skids. So pro hack there. Um, cable is just below the knee here. I am kicking out into the side. You'll notice I'm also touching my upper glute as well in this exercise to try to really, really, really feel it there. I found that it helps with the mind muscle connection with that regard. Um, but this is a fantastic exercise, making sure you're kicking that heel and keeping those toes pointed downward and not letting anything hinky happening with that. Next up is GHD reverse hypers. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this exercise. Today, I chose to put the band above my knees and do a more of a wide stance variation with this. You can do more narrow. You can do a lot of variations with the GHD. It's a great machine, very versatile. I do not have a 45 degree hyper machine in my gym, so this takes the place of it. Um, but you'll notice the first thing that I do is I actually try to push my hips into the pad first in order to lift my legs up. Too often I'll see people trying to lift with their QL or their low back and they wonder why they're not feeling it in their glutes. Give that a try. Push your hips into the pad first and then try to kick your legs up. Keeping the feet flexed here is also very, very important. Going to that lockout, really feeling the squeeze. And I pretty much do not even count these. I just go until I almost can't anymore. And then I do a few more sets of this. So it's a fantastic exercise, feeling it a lot in my glutes, um, upper, lower, everything here. Um, it's a great, great exercise. Last exercise of the day here is goblet squats. I'm using the Brett Contreras Strength T-Bell for this one because I literally cannot wrap my hands safely around a 75 to 100 pound dumbbell. Um, so this opts me into a better, safer movement. And I can actually play more with my angles of my feet as you saw me move my foot just a couple of seconds ago. Um, the goal here for me is to really feel this in my lower glutes. But at this point in the workout, I'm pretty darn tired. I'm just trying to squeeze the crap out of my glutes at this point, get any last blood flow in there to force the muscles to grow, to change, to come back better. This is what is required for me to grow, to grow in the sport of bikini, because my feedback was I need more upper body muscle, I need more lower body muscle, so this is what has to happen. So don't be afraid, challenge yourself, make the face. Every set, every rep matters, and it pushes you forward even closer to your goals. So don't be afraid to challenge yourself in your training. Go out there, have some fun, and grow some muscle. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this glute training video. I hope you found this training video helpful with your own goals, your own training and things like that. Um, my coach, Paul Ravella, he designs my training program for me um, because you know, based upon my feedback in 2020, I needed more muscle everywhere, according to Sandy after my national show. So that's exactly what we've been doing the past two years is building that muscle mass for my own shape, for bikini to be competitive at the national stage in 2023. So I'm a coach, so I designed tons of training programs and customized them for my clients. And when it comes to me, I don't want to have to think. So it's just easier to have Paul and have a coach of my own designing my training, designing my you know nutrition plan, macros, everything like that as well. Um, so I do have my protein shake with me from Core Nutritionals, my Core ISO Red Velvet. It's fantastic. Um, everyone asks me, oh, do you need to sling a protein shake right after the gym? My answer is not necessarily. For me, this is working well today because it took a little bit longer to film everything today for you guys, as well as get in the rest of my working sets and things like that. So to avoid my blood sugar 
dropping to avoid being a hangry bear when I get home to my husband. Um, I found it helpful to bring it with me today. Normally I'll drink it when I get home, but you know, the anabolic window is a lot wider than people think. And you know, I usually suggest to my clients within about two to three hours, just because yes, your blood sugar could drop. You could experience that just like tired and just like lethargic feeling. So to avoid that, try to get in a meal, fast digesting protein, carbohydrates, fast digesting for them too about you know two to three hours post training at least don't go longer than that just because again you could feel lethargic blood sugar could drop and just everything else could just start going a little bit haywire so hope you found it helpful um like comment subscribe below to my channel there's way more videos coming comment below with your favorite glute exercises and yeah and also what other videos you want to see from my channel and i will catch you guys in the next video